Hey there. Welcome back to our channel, featuring a book summary of Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspire Everyone to Take Action by Simon Sinek. In this video, we will dive into the key concepts and insights from this influential book that explores the power of starting with why. So, let's get started. But before we dive into the content, I kindly request a moment of your time to appreciate this video by liking it, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that notification bell. Your support means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Start with why tackles a fundamental question. What makes some organizations and people more innovative, influential, and profitable than others? Based on best-selling author Simon Sinek's hugely influential lecture of the same name, the third most-watched TED Talk of all time, these blinks unpack the answer to that conundrum. As Sinek's examples from the business world, politics, and technology show, it's all about asking why, rather than what. Who should read Start With Why? Managers and team leaders. Entrepreneurs building their brand. Self-starters in need of a bit of inspiration. Simon Sinek is a self-professed optimist determined to create a better and brighter future for humanity. An influential speaker and coach, Sinek has helped organizations around the world, like Microsoft, American Express, the United Nations, and the Pentagon, inspire their employees. He's also the author of Leaders Eat Last and Together is Better. Here is a sentence showcasing the greatness of a quote of this book. When the why is absent, imbalance is produced and manipulations thrive. Simon Sinek The profound wisdom encapsulated in the author's words resonates powerfully, reminding us of the timeless beauty and truth found within the pages of this book. Here are the chapters in this remarkable book, each holding valuable insights and captivating narratives that promise to engage and enlighten readers. Chapter 1. The Golden Circle Simon Sinek introduces the Golden Circle concept, comprised of three layers, why, how, and what. Great leaders start with why, communicating their purpose and beliefs before moving on to how and what they do. Chapter 2. The Law of Diffusion of Innovation Sin explains how great leaders and companies appeal to the early adopters and early majority by focusing on their why. Understanding this law can help drive success and make a lasting impact. Chapter 3. The Split Sinek delves into the concept of the split, where some organizations and leaders find success by focusing on why while others struggle to do so. By embracing the why, leaders can inspire action and create a loyal following. Chapter 4. Trust and Culture Building rust and a strong company culture are essential components of starting with why. Leaders who prioritize trust and culture set the foundation for long-term success. Chapter 5. Bringing it all together Sinek demonstrates how starting with why can lead to innovation, employee engagement, and customer loyalty. By understanding the power of why, leaders can inspire everyone to take action and achieve their goals. Here are some invaluable insights gleaned from this captivating book. I trust you will find them exceedingly beneficial. Feel free to delve deeper into its wisdom and let it inspire new perspectives and ideas in your journey. 1. Success is the fruit of design, not of short-term patches. There's a famous story about a group of American automobile manufacturers who visited Japan to inspect the country's car plants. The assembly lines they saw were pretty much the same as those in their own factories, but there was one notable difference. In the United States, a line worker used a rubber mallet to tap the edges of car doors to ensure they fit. In Japan, this job didn't seem to exist. When the American executives asked how these plants managed without this position, their Japanese guide smiled sheepishly and explained that we make sure it fits when we design it. The key message here is, success is the fruit of design, not of short-term patches. Unlike their American counterparts, Japanese car makers weren't looking at a problem and attempting to figure out a makeshift solution. They were engineering the outcome they wanted from the get-go. This has a couple of obvious benefits. First off, a well-designed door is likely to both last longer and be more structurally sound in an accident. Secondly, if you've designed the door correctly, you don't need to buy mallets or hire workers to wield them. That eliminates a lot of waste and saves a lot of money, time, and hassle. But that's not how things work in many organizations. 
What the American car makers were doing with their mallets is a metaphor for the way in which many companies around the world are led. Faced with a result that doesn't match up with their original plan, leaders often turn to perfectly effective short-term patches to achieve their goals. This might keep things chugging along, but it's not the best approach. The most successful organizations don't need mallets. They build products and companies according to a blueprint. Put differently, they make things fit by design, not by default. Every instruction leaders give, every course of action they put in motion, and every target they set begins with the same thing, a decision. Some decide to hammer doors into place, others start somewhere very different. In these blinks, we'll be exploring the second path. As we'll see, this is what guarantees long-term success. It all begins with a simple but powerful question. Why? 2. Manipulating consumers brings short-term benefits but undermines firms' long-term viability. Between 1990 and 2007, the American automobile manufacturer GM saw its market share in the United States drop from 35 to 24 percent faced with competition from Asian companies like Toyota. GM tried to boost its sales by offering customers cashback deals. It began selling more cars, but there was a catch. By 2008, it was losing $729 for every vehicle sold. This wasn't sustainable, and that's the key message here. The key message here is, manipulating consumers brings short-term benefits but undermines firms' long-term viability. 3. Companies like Apple don't just sell products. They affirm their customers' beliefs and values. When you get down to it, Apple is just another computer company. Like Dell, HP, or Toshiba, Apple has some systems that work well and some that don't. All four firms have equal access to resources, talent, and media channels to publicize their wares. Rationally speaking, it doesn't matter which company's product you choose, they're all pretty decent. But that's not how it works. In the real world, folks pay more for Apple devices and stand in line for hours for the latest iPhone. Why is that? 4. Our rational brain doesn't control our decisions. Here's a tricky question. Why do you love your partner? Often, we'll say something like, Well, I don't know. She's funny and smart. But there are millions even billions of funny and smart people out there with whom we don't want to share our lives. Or we might say, he completes me. But how on earth do you look for someone who does that? These aren't the real reasons we fall in love. They're attempts to describe something that's virtually indescribable. There's a reason for that. 5. Innovation spread far and wide when they're championed by a minority of true believers. Can you imagine spending $40,000 on a new type of TV that could be the next big thing but might just be a flop? No, you're not alone. Only a small minority embraces new products and ideas, but this sliver of the consumer population is vital to the success of companies and organizations looking to reach a mass audience. The key message here is, innovation spread far and wide when they're championed by a minority of true believers. Six, companies run into trouble when they lose sense of why. Imagine a small mid-century retail establishment in the United States. The company's founder came of age during the Great Depression and believes in hard work and fairness. Look after folks, he likes to say, and they'll take care of you. The business gradually grows, but it never loses sight of its founding ideals. Sure, prices are low, but that's not what makes the company so popular. What people really love is its holistic philosophy of giving back to employees, customers, and the community. You'll have heard of this company, but you might not have heard it described in this way. It's Walmart. So what went wrong? 7. Teams focused on what often fail, while those that start with why are capable of extraordinary achievements. Samuel Pierpont Langley had it all figured out. He was going to be the first man to fly. A well-connected senior officer at the Smithsonian Institute, he had friends in high places, people like Andrew Carnegie and Alexander Graham Bell. His contacts had helped him land a $50,000 research grant from the U.S. War Department and assemble the brightest minds in the United States. Reporters from the New York Times followed him around, and the public was rooting for him. Success was virtually guaranteed. But despite his hard work and numerous attempts, he just couldn't get his contraption off the ground. 
In Start With Why, Simon Sinek also discusses the concept of the law of diffusion of innovation, which explains how ideas and movements spread within a population. He emphasizes the importance of targeting early adopters and innovators who share your core beliefs and values. Sinek's book offers valuable insights for leaders and organizations looking to create a lasting impact and build a loyal following. By aligning their actions with a clear sense of purpose and inspiring others to do the same, leaders can elevate their leadership to new heights. Remember, great leaders don't just tell people what to do. They inspire them to take action by communicating their why effectively and authentically. As Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. If you're interested in exploring the power of purpose-driven leadership and learning how to inspire others to join your cause, Start With Why is a must-read book that will transform the way you think about leadership and motivation. You can find the link to acquire a copy of this incredible book in the description below. Thank you for tuning in to our summary of Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Let us know in the comments below if you've read the book or if you have any thoughts on the power of starting with why in leadership. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more book summaries and insights, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, remember to always start with why. Thank you for watching.